Hi everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition for Astronomy for Beginners. And today we're going to do a probe review. Uh, perfect timing for Christmas, okay, Christmas is going to be coming up very soon. And I'm just doing this product review on the latest Skywatcher Aplanatic Super Coma Corrector. Again, this is a coma corrector designed for the Skywatcher Quattro series. So the good thing about Newtonian reflectors, they are the best telescope, the best bang for the book. All right? And this particular model here is specially designed for astrophotography. As long as you're aware of collimation, okay, if you're able to collimate the mirrors properly, you can get some fantastic images with huge aperture, collecting all that faint light for, from the deep sky objects like nebula and galaxies and all that. This is fantastic telescope for imaging. And please never underestimate a Newtonian. Okay, Newtonians are very good telescopes. There are a mirror design type telescope, so collimation is required for you to properly align this telescope so that it's, so it's perfect, so you're not going to get any image distortions and all that. And again, if you've not seen my videos at the top, I show you in detail how to collimate a Newtonian reflector. And again, you need a special device like a laser collimator or a Cheshire eyepiece collimator. Again, click on the link at the top. The, the videos are there. All right. Please watch those videos to show you how to collimate a Newtonian. And if anyone's ever contemplating on buying a telescope for Christmas, I would get a Newtonian. And the reasons for the Newtonians is because of the light gathering power you can get some amazing uh, images and views from this particular telescope and believe me it is out of this world a Newtonian is just top-notch optics uh, again you won't get the problems with uh, chromatic aberration which a lot of refractors do suffer all right with the false colouring however this is just white light going through white light through the mirrors all right and it's reflected back down the primary mirror up to the uh, secondary mirror and then through the eyepiece at the one end here as you can see there there's a camera at this side so it's a very simple design and it is just a fantastic scope and again the quattro series is designed for imaging which you can connect a DSLR camera this disc scope is designed for for astrophotography so the biggest drama we have with the Newtonian reflector and if we take a look at this picture As you can see in that picture, there's a close-up of, you, you see the stars, they're not perfectly round. So even though you're polar aligned, your mount's tracking, I mean that's just 10 minutes exposure time, alright. I mean, as you can see in that picture there, you see that all the stars are not perfectly round. As you can see, it's like common comet trails. Now the biggest flaw we have with Newtonians is the primary mirror is curved because it's curved you know, it's, a, it's a concave format so that coma is basically the curvature of that mirror so all the light gets, gets collected from down the tube and onto the primary mirror it's that coma that is caused by the curvature of the primary mirror and it is actually, there's nothing wrong with the telescope itself right it's the way this telescope is designed and all that's doing is giving you a lot of comet trails around the edges of the star field so when you're taking a picture or you're looking through the telescope itself through an eyepiece 
you'll always get this comet trailing everywhere, everywhere around your field of view. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's the way this scope is designed. And all that is, is just reflected light that's collected from the curvature of the primary mirror. All right, and that's what's causing that effect. However, there is a device that you can use and it's this. As you can see here, this is a coma corrector. Now the idea for a coma corrector is you fit it against an eyepiece or your camera and you fit it onto your focuser, all right, draw tube here. And what this special optical device will do is to eliminate as much of that coma effect. And what it does is it makes your stars a lot more pinpointed, all right, and a lot more corrected. So that's what a coma corrector does. It corrects that field of view from the sensor or the eyepiece and it eliminates as much as possible of this comet trailing you get. And a device you pay for is usually you, it'll cost between 80 to about 120 pounds for a coma corrector. However, with the astro images among us, all right, us guys in particular would like perfect images. Comet trailing, around the edges of field of view can be a bit of a problem uh, for imaging all right and sometimes trying to process this comet trailing can be a bit of a nightmare if you're using photoshop to try and correct the stars and make them perfectly round so we use a coma corrector to correct this and uh, give us a, a nice sharper pinpointed stars across the field of view so a coma corrector, if you are going to use it for astrophotography, then I recommend you gain a coma corrector for a Newtonian reflector if you're going to use the telescope for astrophotography. So a coma corrector is crucial. However, the faster the telescope, the more the primary mirror has a deeper curve. And the reason for a deeper curve, the faster the scope, which means is lower the vertical ratio. This is an F4. The curvature is a lot steeper. Okay, so the mirror is even steeper. And what that does is it shortens the tube and focuses the light a lot more. So you get worse coma effects. However, the standard Skywatcher coma corrector doesn't correct it all. All right, it does correct some of it on the F4 Quattro but it doesn't eliminate it completely. So that's why we need a special kind of coma corrector to eliminate this coma and be com completely coma free. So again, please hit the like button, all right? Again, reviews like this don't come often, all right? I spend a lot of hard time uh, developing new ideas and reviewing new products so that I can push out the information to you guys and girls, so you get the you get to have a chance to see how the product performs. Okay, so please show your appreciation. Please support this channel. Please subscribe onto, onto my channel. Again, please hit the like button onto my channel and activate the notifications. All right, that will keep you tuned for the new uh, astronomy for beginners videos coming out very very soon. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look on this latest Skywatcher Aplanatic Super Coma Corrector. So if you're interested and you want to watch further, let's crack on with this and let's do this. So here we have the Skywatcher Aplanatic Newtonian Super Coma Corrector. Comes with this fantastic Gucci box very well protected as you can see there and it's got four inserts and as you can see here well packaged quite a big coma corrector all right as you can see if we unscrew that it doesn't have to be used for sky watcher quattro telescopes you can use it for gso uh, telescope service or any f4 newtonian reflectors ranges of sizes depends on the vertical length so you can use uh, between uh, 6 inch to 150 millimeter all the way up to 12 inch 
uh, Newtonian reflectors. So 6 inch, 8 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch uh, Newtonian reflectors. As long as they are an F4 format Newtonian reflector. The actual size of the tube weighs around about 300 kilograms. Uh, the actual length is around about 4 inch or 100 millimeter. And the price range between this is around about 199 to about 230 30 to about 240 pounds. It just depends where you get this from. I ordered mine from Rover Valley Optics at a really good price. The lowest price I can find is around about 202 pounds. As you can see there, very good optic, optical glass, and that's what you want. So you're paying for quality. So it is a very expensive coma corrector. So with this corrector, because the way it's made and designed, what it does is it doesn't change the photical length. So don't get confused with uh, field flatteners and photical reducers, right? This is purely for coma. It does flatten the field. So what it does, it doesn't change the photical length or the modification is you can use it on full sensor DSLR cameras. So you can use the full frame uh, DSLR cameras, all right? So if you've got a Nikon or a Canon, all right, and you've got full frame, you can use this coma corrector for those applications. Now you can get specialized coma correctors for very fast Newtonians, but they are extremely expensive. So you could pay for a really good one, which has a full school reducing for about 700 and 800 pounds. Which, to be honest with you, it does help you, it does actually help uh, make your Newtonian uh, collect more light quicker, but you end up paying premium price for premium optics. This is quite a good price, good old general round price, and they have used good quality glass F FPL 51. It is actually quite compact and they've used, uh, it's actually a metal body. So it looks like it's made out of plastic. So don't be fooled, it's actually a powdered, coated aluminium tube, all right? It does, because it's dark in the uh, uh, tube, it means there's little baffles inside, all right? Inside the actual coma corrector itself. Which is also very handy because with the darkened baffles inside here, it will eliminate some of the stray light. And some of the stray light which can be captured and ruin your images through your uh, camera sensor. There is a few cons as well which I like to highlight. Okay, One is its weight. Now it is extremely heavy. All right, 300 grams is a lot of weight for a coma, coma corrector. So... If you are going to use this optical device, then use a heavy duty focuser. Luckily, the Skywatcher Quattro series does actually have a linear uh, ball bearing 2 inch format focuser. It can withstand a lot of weight, so there's no need to worry about that. However, if you've got other types of telescopes, then you might need to upgrade the focuser to compensate for the extra weight. Particularly if you're going to combine it with your T-ring and your camera on your DSLR, you're already adding between 800 to 900 grams. It's almost a kilogram of weight added onto there already. The other bugbear is this. Now, I was going to use a, a typical T-ring, which you get. This one's for a Canon. Now, the one thing that I've noticed they've used. Here, on this comma corrector, it's a different thread. This is a T2 thread, however, this isn't. They've used a M48 thread. Now, the reason why they use that, the M48 thread, is that that's really designed for full sensor uh, cameras. So, because I have a, a a crop sensor camera, which is the uh, which I have here. All right, this is the 600D. This is just a normal crop sensor camera. So a T2 ring like this is not going to fit this coma corrector. So ideally, you want this type of T ring 
which actually isn't a TV ring as such. This is the M48 by 075 millimeter thread camera adapter. So again, it's a still a camera adapter. This is the Skywatcher one. So again, the links below for that. If you want to order this particular TV ring, threads into. Okay, threads in, nice and tight, and again, you line up the two lines, like so, okay, and then you screw it in, like so. That's a very good fit. The main concern is the optical back focus. Now, back focus is, I've highlighted this before in another video. Again, if you check the link at the top, I've already mentioned about operating uh, with the back focus. Now the back focus is very crucial for this coma corrected to work properly. So you, there is needs to be an air gap and in that air gap is uh, you've got to have that minimum back focus and it really depends on the focal length of your telescope and it also de depends on your DSLR camera or if you're going to use CCD cameras all right, you need to get the air gap perfectly. Now, the optimal uh, back focus depends on uh, many things. So, like, if you have a 600 millimeter vertical length telescope, you need a working distance of 51.66 millimeter. If you've got a vertical length of 800 millimeters, which is the 8 inch quattro, for example. Uh, you need a working distance of 53.66 millimeter of air gap. A focal length of a thousand millimeter, you need to have 55 millimeter air gap. If you've got 1200 millimeter focal length, then you need a working distance of 54.66 millimeter. The next one is 1500 millimeter working distance is 50. 4.60 millimeter. It's very crucial that you get that air gap. All that is is the element glass between this point here and to the actual sensor, all right, itself. That is the operating air gap. I have mentioned this before in the other video. Please check that video out to see what I mean about this air gap. It is very crucial that you get this working distance in order for the coma corrector to work effectively and eliminate all that coma. Now, if you're going to use this coma corrector for CCDs, and this is a typical uh, CCD I've got here, QHY ATEL, all right? This is a dedicated astro camera. You can use CMOS or CCD. Now, if you've got a specialized camera like this, again, this has got a quite a big sensor as well. This will work, this coma corrector will work for CCDs without problem. The only issue that you do need is this additional uh, piece here. Now, this is an M48 thread, which is here, as you can see there, and it's got a T2 adapter. It's a low profile adapter. Again, if you want to order these, you need to click on the description below so you can order this special adapter. Now, this is, allows you to connect your, connect your say, adapter to your CCD. All right, and it just screws in like, that, like so. So, straight away, you can adapt it straight onto CCDs without a problem. Now, again, as I mentioned before about uh, the air gap, all right? Unfortunately, this is not the correct air gap for that CCD. So I need to start work, need to start working out what I need for that air gap to, uh, to work properly. Now, this is a variable extension uh, T2 adapter that I've got here. Again, this is from Barda. This is the Barda Verilock T2 extension. So I can actually extend this up and down. Now I know I've got the back focus of 23 millimeter at the back of the sensor of the QHY 8L. So what I have to do is I have to calculate from there, 
from that point, from the point of the optical train on the coma corrector, from the adapter, and then adjust the air gap accordingly. So again, if I'm using it on the eight, if I'm using it with the Skywatcher Quattro series, I've got to make sure that my eight inch is still within the 53.66 millimeter. The other thing is, you may need M48 spacers. So in other words, you need M48 spaces to get the exact air gap you need for your CCD or your CMOS astral camera. So again, you can order these spacers. Again, the links are below for them. All right, to get the exact spacer uh, air and gap that you need. Again, it fits perfectly. There's no need to measure the air gap on on this coma corrector because where it's designed as long as you ordered the Skywatcher variants of T-Ring okay you are exactly bang on not a problem don't need to adjust anything on the air gap all right this is already set all right so there's no need to worry about that and that's what I like about this coma corrector it works perfectly with this type of camera, with this half crop sensor camera on this on the 600D, I believe like the 450, uh, the 550, uh, or and the 700D series of cameras also work perfectly with this DSLR camera, and I believe the 1100D as well and 1200. So all the half crop sensors work perfectly uh, with this type of T-ring. And the coma corrector so there's no need to bother with spacers adapters as long as you've got that correct m48.75 millimeter thread camera adapter you are good to go all right and that's why i like about this coma corrector it does have an internal two uh, t2 thread and it fits directly like so and i put my two inch filters without a problem Right, so it screws in there, nice and comfortable. I can now attach my special filters, all right? This is my my IDAS LPS V4 filter, one of my favorites. Quite an expensive filter, but fantastic for drawing out all the hydrogen alpha nebula regions of the night sky. And this is a fantastic filter. And again, I screw that in there perfectly. So I can change filters willy-nilly. So I thought I'd just right. show you this. Alright, show you the comparison between the standard Skywatcher Coma Corrector, which this one's designed for F5 and above Newtonian reflectors. And as you can see, there is a massive difference between the both of them. Uh, this one's a lot lighter, a lot more compact. It's still got the M48 thread, like before. And it, it's, a, it's a very good Coma Corrector. It does correct some of the coma on the F4s but it's not that great okay so this is why this was designed to eliminate all the coma completely now as you can see very different glass all right if we cap the size right you can really tell the difference between the two all right if I get the uh, something to block it at the back if I get to I mean that's quite good glass for the standard uh, sky watcher all right as you can see this glass is a lot more superior than the standard coma corrector hence why the price is a lot more as well as a four element design okay you can really tell the optical quality between the glass I mean to be honest with you this is quite a good coma corrector it's nice and cheap so we have the telescope on the quattro 8 inch and as you can see I've got my camera. This coma corrector fits only on two inch format focusers. So you just basically slot it straight in, loosen the screws, alright, and you slot it straight in. Okay? And just lock it in place like so. As you can see here, it is a very good fit. No free play, okay, whatsoever. As we slacken up the lock screws, as you can see there, I have got a lot of weight. The camera itself weighs 
almost a kilogram and also you've got the draw tube there with the coma corrector it, as you can see there it fits nice and snug no 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 play in there whatsoever and the actual focuser can handle it not a problem fantastic movement all right from the focuser that's what I like about the Quattro series they do have decent linear ball bearing focusers all right there's no flexure on there whatsoever and that's what you don't need so if you're going to use this coma corrector and you haven't got a focuser like the Quattro series that's heavy duty then I recommend to change the focuser that can handle that extra weight but here I've got it perfect and when I lock it in place all right I've got no I've got no play I've got no play whatsoever on the optical train and you can see there it fits snugly there not a problem I, as you can just see there you, the actual filter and the coma corrector sticking out from this end so it actually from the draw tube it fits flush all the way down to the bottom of this focuser tube it actually fills up the whole weight of that focuser all right on the quattro series so if i just just move the the focuser You can see what I mean, right? It sticks exactly in line with that focuser draw tube, right? Perfectly. So now you can see now is I, I disconnected the the camera and the camera adapter, and as you can see, you can actually permanently leave this coma corrector onto the telescope main tube, and all you do is just put in the dust cap like so, all right, and you could leave it. That's it. You can actually have this permanently fixed onto your main tube, which, again, I quite like that. All right, all that does is just saves a bit of space and a lot of hassle connecting bits, because it's not you know what it's like in astronomy when you're doing astral imaging, you're playing around with filters, adapters, T rings, you name it, swapping and changing filter wheels, and etc. etc. So. With that little nice feature there, which where this optical train or where this corrector is designed perfectly for the Quattro series, and you can just leave it in there and you don't need to worry about it. Now, I have used this coma corrector to try and collimate my Newtonian using my laser collimator. This fits perfectly. As long as you've got uh, the adapter, which is this self-centering, uh, which is the two inch to an inch and a quarter self-adaptering, this actually has an M48 thread, which fits directly onto the coma corrector. Now I have tried to collimate it, and to be honest with you, collimation is an absolute nightmare. And I don't think it's going to work. So I have tried to collimate it using the adjusting the screws and the screws at the back. All right, and it doesn't matter where you do it. All right, where you adjust it, I can never get it perfect. I mean, I sometimes get weird blurs as well, where I get two laser beams. So I have tried to collimate it in situ with my laser collimator and uh, it doesn't work very well so if you are going to use this coma corrector you got to, you're gonna have to remove it and do the normal procedure of using the older method using the laser collimator directly all right to get me my, to get my collimation
So, what do you reckon? You can tell a massive difference with the image quality. That Aplanatic Coma Corrector has really done an amazing job. As you can see there, the actual image quality is much sharper. Uh, the stars are nice and pinpointed. Even the bright stars got nice, tighter, uh, the uh, diffraction spikes, okay? Uh, a lot of people don't like diffraction spikes as such, but I love them on this particular telescope, right? Particularly if you're imaging Pleiades, the uh, M45 open cluster. I love the stars formations image for a telescope, for a Newtonian telescope, all right? I love those diffraction spikes, all right? And M45 is is one of the top deep sky objects you should image with a Newtonian. I highly recommend you do that, all right? Because you get some fantastic diffraction spikes with a Newtonian. So, as you can see there, that coma corrector has really, as, as well as made it sharper, it's made it much more crisp, the images, right? and it's corrected the whole coma across the field. However, this being uh, perfect for the F4 Newtonian, I would seriously highly recommend if you're going to take astro imaging and you want the very best out of your Quattro series of your Newtonian reflector, then I highly recommend you to purchase this Aplomatic Super Coma Corrector because it really is, you know, the image quality, it does stand out and you can really see that even through the raw images and even when the images have been stacked. Don't forget, this, this mount, this EQ6 mount has been super tuned, all right? There's had a lot of uh, super tuning. Again, if you've not seen those videos, please check out the link at the top, all right? And I'll take you through the super tune series on the NEQ6 mount, all right? Again, this has been tracking for 10 minutes long. It ISO 800 on my DSLR camera. So would I recommend it? Yes, I would, all right? Despite the price, and it's, it's quite amazing that there's not much reviews on this optical device. Um, and that's the reason why I've done this product review, to show you guys and girls what this uh, product is like, all right? And after sharing my experiences, if you are serious about astrophotography and you want to use your Newtonian reflector, please purchase that coma corrector, all right? It is a fantastic device, all right? And I wish I bought this a few years back, because believe me, that optical device has been there for about two to three years. So, again, thanks for watching my videos. Please hit the like button. Again, please support my channel. Uh, again, please subscribe to my channel. All that's going to do is if you hit the notifications, you will get to see more of my videos coming out soon. So again, I hope you liked the video. Again, please uh, keep watching. All right, I will keep you posted with some new latest videos coming soon. So again, thanks again. Thanks for watching. And I wish you all clear skies.